So building on that, so then if women were fully represented in politics, how would our national politics change? Well, I have a lot of theories on this, and I'm going to tell you all about it. So, uh, <laughs> so there's, a, there's this. Um, so when 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 Senator Mer uh, Mikulski became this, when there was two women who were in the Senate, Senator Mikulski decided, let's have a women's caucus, and so she asked the other female senator out to dinner. And she kept up that tradition <laughs> for the last 20 years. And so she keeps having these quarterly dinners where all the women senators, Democrats and Republicans, come together as friends, as, as mothers, as daughters, as wives, and as women, and as, and as people first. And we get to know each other, and we begin to concern ourselves with each other's lives, how they're doing, the daughter's wedding, and whatever else is going on. And it's been very productive because what it allows for is something that women are often, not always, very good at, and that's listening, that's uh, finding what we have in common, and trying to build from there. So every time I've ever passed a major piece of legislation in Washington, it's because of a strong Republican woman helping me. So when I first started to work on uh, the 9-11 health bill, it was Lisa Murkowski, Olympia Snow, and Susan Collins who'd every week go to their caucus meetings and said, Saying, why aren't we standing with first responders? We're the party of first responders. Why aren't we supporting Kirsten's bill? And over time, really uh, honed that bill, helped me find a way to pay for it that the Republicans couldn't object to, and they made sure that we passed that bill. We passed that bill unanimously. And on the darkest days when I felt I had no chance of passing that bill, it'd be Susan Collins who could come up to me and say, you know, Kirsten, if you held the vote today, they'd have to vote yes. And so I was always encouraged to keep pushing forward. Don't ask, don't tell repeal. Susan Collins, again, led the charge on that, as well as the very obvious piece of legislation to ban insider trading by members of Congress. <laughs> Easy consensus there. Um, but it, what makes the difference is we want to solve problems. And if you look at this most recent debate about sexual assault in the military, 20 out of 20 of the female senators wrote at least one part of that legislation, because it was a whole host of reforms. The final reform, taking the decision-making out of the chain of command, was supported by 17 out of 20 women, and that is a broad-based coalition. Women are not a monolith. We do not agree on everything, um, nor should we. But there's an instinct that I think is very helpful that wants to find common ground and build from there. So my long-term strategy for fixing Congress is get 51% women, because I think there'll be more interest <laughs> in building consensus. Right, right.